I guess to some people on the English concertina, like this, uh, the arrangement of notes is a bit of a mystery. It might seem like a kind of haphazard affair, but it really isn't, and there is a kind of beautiful logic to it, and I'm gonna try and explain that to you in this video. First thing you need to do is to orientate yourself. You need to hold the thing up the right way, and obviously it's the thumbs in the straps, fingers underneath the finger rests, and uh, put it on top of your knee, put one end on top of your knee. And if you look um, along one side, we're looking at my left side of the concertina here, you'll see the rows are straight back to the front. And there's first row, second row, third row, and fourth row, and the same over here. Four straight rows. And that's the first thing you need to understand, is that that's the way you hold it, and that's the way you look at the rows. Now, <clears throat> On those rows, the top row and the bottom row contain all the, if you like, the black notes of the piano, all the sharps and the flats. Okay, on a 48 button English concertina, there are a few duplicates, which I'll talk about in a while. But just for the moment, just understand that those are the black notes, the sharps and the flats, the accidentals, if you like, and the two middle rows are all the white notes of the piano and these are actually coloured white on this concertina which is kind of a student model and basically uh, lots of concertinas, lots of English concertinas all the buttons are the same colour, they're all, they're all silver or they're all white this is quite handy for a student and it's an old Lachenal uh, concertina from the late 1800s or early 1900s and basically as I said black notes, white notes and all the C's don't know if you can see that there and there on this side and uh, there might not be a C because it's faded in there all the C's were coloured red so you can find them quickly so that's that's the next thing so the, the four straight rows and black notes white notes the 48 button English concertina is fully chromatic from the low G here <laughs> all the way up to this really high C, also on the same side. And that C is three octaves above middle C, so it's a really high pitch note, isn't it? Um, so that's the actual range, and you've got every single note uh, that you'd find on a piano keyboard between those two notes, you can find it on this English concertina. Now I could run through the notes chromatically, but I don't think that's particularly helpful. Uh, I think there's a better way and that is to understand the uh, relationship of one note to another. Let's just deal with the um, left side here and all the white notes. Now basically, as you go diagonally, I'm going to take my little finger out of the way here so that so you can see the notes. As you go diagonally from one note to another, I'll do the same thing over here. You are jumping up in thirds, and sometimes that's a major third, sometimes that's a minor third. Right, let's understand what a third is. Um, this note is an A. I'm going to get my finger out of the way. This, this one's an A. This one's a C. So if you say to yourself A, B, C, that's three letter names, so that's why we call that interval, that jump up is a third. Now if you can imagine that on a piano keyboard, you'd have A, a white note, you'd have a B flat or A sharp, a black note next to it, then B, a white note, and then C, a white note. So you're actually going up a tone and a semitone, and a tone plus a semitone is a minor third. So A to C, is a minor third. So if I play those two notes together, they sound quite nice. So that is an interval of a minor third. From C to E, the next jump, C to E here, C, D, E, three letter names, so it's a third. That's two tones, so that's a major third. Then we have E to G, E, F, G, see? That is a minor third. Uh, because there is a tone and a semitone. I get the idea. Uh, G, then up to B. 
G, A, B. Of course, once we get to G in music, we go back to A. I'm sure you knew that. Uh, G, A, B, so another third. This is, that's two tones. That's a major third. Then we have B up to D, B, C, D. That's a minor third. Uh, then we have D up to F. Do you get the idea? D to F. A D to F is a minor third. F to A. Uh, F, G, A. That's a, a major third. And then we have A to C again. And so forth. So basically, if you know this note is an A, you know this note is a C. And if you know this note is a C, you know this note is an E. And if you know this note is an E, you know this note is a G. So jumping up in thirds, just go uh, three letters in the alphabet and you'll be able to find out the next note. So the same thing over here, let's just get my finger out of the way, see if I can operate the bellows without playing the thing properly. So this is a G, this is a B, G A B, that's a major third. This is a B, this is a D, okay, that is a minor third. D to F then, another minor third, F to A, major third, A to C, uh, minor third, then we have C to E, which is a major third, E to G, which is a minor third, and so on and so forth. So basically, if you go three up through the alphabet, remembering when you get to G, you go back to A, you know the next note up diagonally is gonna be a third above. And that's a pretty good way of, of learning the notes. So that's diagonally. Supposing you go straight up the row. Well, let's just deal with this row of white notes here. Now, we said diagonally the interval was a third. If you go straight up the row, the interval is a fifth. So this is C. So C, D, E, F, G. Okay, so C to G is a fifth. Uh, G, A, B, C, D. G to D is a fifth. Uh, then we've got D to A, uh, which is a fifth, okay? So, C to G, a fifth, G to D, a fifth, D to A is a fifth, A to E is a fifth. So basically, you're going up uh, in fifths all the way through. Let's deal with this row. This one's an A, so this must be E, this one must be B, and this one is F, all you have to remember there is, it is a fifth, but it's uh, a flattened fifth. A, a proper perfect fifth would be B to F sharp. This is B to F. And then you have F to C, which is a fifth. And then you'd have C to G again. So, fifths, okay? So diagonally it goes up in thirds, straight up it goes up in fifths. So, so let's show you this side. This is G, this must be D, and A, and E, and B, and so forth. This is B, this is F, that's that funny one again, that flattened fifth, but it's still a fifth. Uh, so this is F, this is C, this is G, and so it goes up in fifths. So along the rows, it goes up in fifths, and diagonally, it goes up in thirds. We're talking just about the rows uh, with the white notes, not the accidental rows for the moment. So that's fairly interesting, I think. Let's deal with those accidental rows now. And uh, what you have here is a black note, and what it is, it's either a semitone above or a semitone below the uh, note that's adjacent to it. So you can see you've got these one, two, three, four, five, six white notes, and six black notes exactly underneath, and likewise here. You've got these six white notes and these six black notes directly above. On this side, same idea, except you're one short uh, with the black notes here. Um, you've got these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white notes here. Six black notes. Here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six white notes and only five black notes here. So what am I saying here? Well, basically, now let's just deal with this, this one down here. Okay, so this note is G. So the note next to it is either a semitone above or a semitone below. It's actually a semitone above, 
and it is G sharp, okay? So this note is D, this note is a semitone above, which is D sharp. This note is A, this note is a semitone below it. It's actually A flat, okay? This note is E, this note is a semitone below, E flat. This note is B, this note's a semitone below, B flat. So that's the sharps on row one. Let's deal with the ones on the fourth row here. So this note is B, this note is B flat, semitone below. This note is F, this is F sharp, a semitone above. This is C, this is C sharp, a semitone above. This is G, this is G sharp, semitone above. This one's D, this is D sharp, a semitone above. So the black notes are always a semitone above, or the shortest step you can take, if you like, above or below the white note that they are adjacent to. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's deal with this right here. So this is C, this is C sharp. Uh, this note is G, this is G sharp, this is D, this is D sharp, this is A, this is A flat, that goes down at one. This note is E, this is E flat, this is B, and this is B flat. And similarly over here, let's uh, show you the lowest row, this one note is A, this is A flat, this is E, this is E flat, this is B, this is B flat, this is F, this is F sharp, this is C, this is C sharp, this is G, this is G sharp. Okay. So if you see that the note is labelled as a sharp, it's going to be one semitone higher than its adjacent white note. If you see the note is labelled as a flat, it's a semitone below uh, the adjacent white note. And there are five duplications so that you, you can get the accidental, you can get the black note on both sides of the concertina. And these are the duplications. Um, you've got this note here, which is E flat. <laughs> And it's also over here as D sharp. That's the first duplication. This note is G sharp. Also duplicated here as A flat. Uh, this one's D sharp. Duplicated here as E flat. This one is A flat. Duplicated here as G sharp. This note is E flat. Duplicated here as D sharp. So you've got five duplications, which kind of confuses the issue a little bit, um, but it's actually very helpful because you can get that those particular five black notes on both sides of the instrument, which helps uh, a lot when you're doing little slurs, little grace notes. It's exactly the same on this Jackie concertina, same layout. Not quite so easy for a beginner because obviously they're all white, they're all coloured white. So you've got no helpful red C's or black accidentals, but it's the same idea. This row here is only three accidentals on this row and three on this row. And over here, same thing, three and three, but still the same idea. This button here is uh, an air button, which you don't have on the old uh, La Chanel uh, concertina, just for getting the bellows in and out. Um, you might want to learn the white notes just by uh, playing a scale of C. So start on the C and just run up through the ladder, going from side to side. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So if you want to run through the scale of C major, uh, literally start on the C, go left, go right, go left, go right, all the way up, and all the scales work in that, that same way, alternating from side to side. I'm not a great lover of learning scales, but I suppose they are a good way of practicing and finding out uh, the key signature, so understanding where the sharps and the flats come. Now, because of the way the scales work, uh, if you've got a C on this side, the octave above that 
is going to be on the other side. So there's there's the low C, that's middle C by the way on the piano. Because if you go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, you end up on the right hand side because of the eight notes of the scale. So if you've got a C here, you're going to know the octave above it is on the right hand side. Similarly, if you've got a D here, you're going to know that the octave is on the other side. So with the concertina, with the 48 button, uh, I'm not talking about the black notes here particularly, just the white notes, um, you'll know for a fact that if you've got a note on this side, uh, like a C, uh, the next available C is actually two octaves above, okay? So if you've got a note C here, See, two octaves above, but the note one octave above is on the opposite side. So let's play this note, which is an A, left hand side, the octave above is there on the right hand side. Um, but two octaves above, see, it's on the same side, albeit on the other row. So probably all kinds of uh, formulae you can make up. You can make little rhymes up, I guess, uh, to help you uh, remember where the notes are, what they are. Something that helps uh, people who read music is the fact that all of the notes on the left hand side fall on the notes on the stave that are on lines and all of the notes on the right hand side fall uh, on the notes that are in the spaces of the uh, treble clef. So for instance uh, middle C is on the line so is E, so is G, so is B, so is D, so is F so is A, and over here, uh, G here, is in the uh, second space, uh, down on the ledger line there, B is underneath the um, first line, and then you've got D in a space, F in a space, A in a space, C in a space, E in a space, they're all in the spaces of the treble clef, and the left hand side is on the lines. So the way that the accidentals work, we've got the duplications, so over here, we're calling this note E flat on a line, but over here, we're calling it D sharp, okay, because that's in the space, you see? They're, that's called enharmonic. It's the same note, just giving it a different name. So over here, it's on a line of the treble clef, and this on this side, it's in a space, so E flat, D sharp. That may be helpful, it may not be. When I read music, I've said this several times in my videos, but I find the tablature that I've invented. Uh, at the time of doing this video, I may, may uh, change my mind subsequently from this, but uh, for the moment, I'm finding my tablature a lot easier to follow and I'm able to play more accurately using it. But, you know, as I say, never say never, I may change my mind. So anyway, it was a pretty lengthy old video, that. Um, but if you have been confused about the names of the notes and you want some kind of method of learning them, uh, hopefully this video will have helped you.